first and the standard way is to do what we call a 24-hour reflux study, a test called an impedance test. And this involves placing a tiny little catheter, about three millimeters uh, wide, through the nose, uh, down into the bottom of the esophagus. And what this will do is it will measure acidic as well as non-acidic reflux in the bottom of the esophagus. So it will tell us over 24 hours if there is reflux, it'll tell us what type of reflux, and it will tell us how much reflux there is. Now, during that test, uh, the patient will carry around a little recorder which is attached to the end of the catheter. And every time they have a meal, and most particularly every time they get a symptom, they can press a button. So the second thing that an impedance test will do is it will tell us if there is a relationship between measuring reflux and the symptoms that people record. And the third thing that impedance does is it will tell us not only if there is reflux, but what is coming up from the stomach. So it'll tell us if that's gaseous, if it's liquid, or if it's solid. And because it measures non-acidic reflux, that can be very helpful in being able to, uh, to see whether or not patient's symptoms are associated not just with acid, but non-acidic reflux. And we find that very often, people particularly with laryngopharyngeal symptoms will test positive on an impedance test because you're measuring not just acid, but non-acidic reflux as well. The alternative way to measure uh, reflux is what we call a pH capsule test. Uh, the most commonly used is a Bravo study. So this is slightly different from the uh, standard catheter test insofar as a little cat, it involves placing a little capsule which sits on the lining at the bottom of the esophagus, and that sits there uh, for longer, usually, than the catheter test through the nose. So it will stay there for two, three, even four days. So it's got a longer chance of picking up uh, reflux if it's present. The second beauty of the Bravo test is that instead of a tube coming out through the nose, which is necessary to capture the data, it sends the data wirelessly via Bluetooth to a little recorder which patients carry around. So the great beauties are it, it can stay in for longer, has got no tubes coming out through the nose, um, but it has to be put in during an endoscopy and it only measures acid. So in some patients who have got non-acidic reflux, a Bravo study will be, be negative and suggest that there is no reflux when an impedance test will be positive. Sometimes, in both of these tests, if they're undertaken over a period in which patients aren't getting a lot of reflux, if those symptoms are secondary to reflux, they may provide a negative test, a false negative. And everybody with reflux will know that their symptoms very often do vary from day to day. Sometimes they have good days and sometimes they have bad days, good weeks, bad weeks. So the critical thing is that your consultant will listen to you, will listen to your symptoms, listen to what you prefer to do, and then will decide what is the best test for you. If you haven't had an endoscopy before, then it very, will often make sense to combine a Bravo test rather than have two tests. But if you have had an endoscopy before, and for instance, you've probably got, uh, you've got mostly throat symptoms which haven't responded particularly well to antacids, then he may suggest that it's more appropriate that you have an impedance test. So you will, Make that decision together with your consultant.